In this video, we will be going through a brief introduction to MATLAB. So this is assuming that all you've done so far is download MATLAB and you've maybe opened it up for the first time. If you're having any trouble installing MATLAB on your computer, I would maybe pause this video and either reach out to me or t your TA um, and kind of get set up with that first. But assuming that you've downloaded and installed MATLAB, and you've double clicked on the icon and you have it open, what you might see is something very similar to this. I've made a couple of updates. Um, I've changed the font size so that hopefully in the video it's, it's legible, even if you're on a tablet or a phone. And of course, I also have this much larger cursor and uh, kind of in this red color so that you can see where my mouse is more easily on the screen. So maybe your screen doesn't look exactly like this, but hopefully you have something similar. First thing we might want to do is we can notice up here there's this layout button. So if I click on this, uh, right now we're in the default layout, but most of what we do is going to be done in this command window here. So I personally like to have this a little bit larger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to click two column. So already the command window is looking a little bit bigger. We have more space to type. And we're not going to be using the current folder in this video. We're not going to deal with file paths. Um, this will become very important for organization, but let's ignore it for now. So I'm going to go to layout and we can see here it says show and there's a bunch of check marks and I'm just going to click current folder. And we can see now on the left, all I have is just this workspace tab. If I want to adjust the width of this tab, I can kind of hover over this bar here and I can move it left and right until it's the size that I want. So, okay, like I mentioned, most of what we do is going to be done in this command window. So we have these two greater than symbols here and we can just start typing. So let's try something like two plus two and then I'm going to press the enter key and we can see, oh, the answer is four, like we, could, we would expect. You could try three times three, it's gonna be nine and what if we hit pi, for instance? We can see here, gives us an approximation of pi. Or we could even try something like maybe pi to the power of 10, let's say. So here you can see we have 9.3648, and then we have this e plus 04. And the way you want to read this is 9.3648 times 10 to the power of four. So this is MATLAB's way of um, the scientific notation. So maybe I want more decimal places, let's say. So one thing that I can do is I can say format long. I'm going to hit the enter key. And then let's try the same thing. Let's try pi to the 10. And instead of typing it out again, one thing that we can do is if you look at your arrow keys and you press the up arrow, you can see it has some of our previous commands here. So we did two plus two together, three times three. These other commands are from before I started the video, so don't worry about them yet. But let's go to pi to the 10. I'm going to hit enter. And then now notice that we get many more decimal places, but we still have this 10 to the four. Um, let's change it back to the short form though, just to practice. So we can say format short. And if we try the same thing, again, I'm just going to hit the up key and go pi to the 10. And here we can see we have the truncated version. So, uh, of course, I don't expect you to have just known to type format long and format short. Um, these are things that you'll pick up over time just as you see more and more functions. Um, but a very important principle of coding and just math and learning in general is how to look for things and how to get help when you need it. So one of the first places you might look for help is by typing the help command followed by what you want help with. So in this case, let's take a look at format. Again, I'm going to press the enter key and we can see now, okay, we have some documentation. So I don't really need any information from it right now. I'm not looking for anything in particular, so it's not really worth reading this whole thing. But we can see here, we have our format long and format short that we were using before. Um, personally, so it's very good to know that this help command exists. I don't use it as much as you might think. My preferred method of getting help actually for coding and for math is to kind of Google what I'm looking for. And you'll see even down here, 
there's a link to documentation for format. So it'll be basically the same information just displayed in your web browser. I find it a little bit easier to read it online, um, but that's just a personal preference. And the help function is a pretty good first place to start if you just have some basic questions about a function. All right, so the screen might look a little bit full right now. Maybe I want to clear things. So one command that I can type is I can type CLC, press enter. And what that's going to do is it's going to just erase the command window for me in that it's gonna create this nice blank screen. If you are paying attention, you might notice that the workspace variable A and S, so the default answer, that didn't change. So what's important to understand is CLC, so that command we just ran, it doesn't erase any variables. You can think of it as just cleaning up the screen. So to kind of demonstrate that, notice if I type A and S and press return, it's going to re uh, return this 9.36 by 10 to the four. So that's the result of one of our previous computations. One thing that I can do is assign variables. So let's say I create a variable, I'll call it my var. Oops, that says my car. My var, and let's say that this is equal to eight times eight. I press return, and notice now that my var is stored as 64. And one thing to highlight is there's a little bit of asymmetry in how we uh, use this equal sign. So notice the variable name goes on the left and what we're assigning it to goes on the right. So we're saying my variable, my var is the name and it's going to be set to a value of eight times eight. So something else that we can do is I can say my var two is equal to my var. So maybe think about what this might do for a second um, and let's press return and see. And we can see, okay, my var two is equal to 64. So what's happening here is we're saying, take my var2, that's gonna be the name of my variable, set it equal to whatever my var is. And in this case, it's 64. What if we try something like this? What if I say my var2 equals my var3? Any guesses for what might happen? We're going to get an error. So another important principle um, or thing to be good at in coding is knowing how to read error messages. So let's look at this one together. We have unrecognized function or variable my var three. So what this is telling us is that my var three doesn't exist. So we haven't set it to any value. It's not a variable. If we look in the workspace, we have a list of all of the variables that are currently defined. So we have answer, which is the default. If I don't specify um, what a value should be. Answer gets updated, similar to the answer button on your calculator. Then we have my var, which is what we defined here at eight times eight. And we have my var two, but there's no my var three. So maybe one more thing I want to show you before we clear variables is, so notice, uh, I just wanna highlight again with the answer. So let's say I don't give any variable name and let's just say I wanna do like six plus two and I hit enter. So I get eight and now we notice up here that answer has been updated to eight. Great, so now let's say I want to clear all of the variables. I want to start from a clean slate. What I can do is type the word clear, press return and now notice that the workspace has been cleared. So there's no active variables. I'm going to create a fresh slate for the screen. So let's type CLC. And now it looks pretty much similar to when we first opened up MATLAB today. Maybe one more thing I want to talk about in this video is what's called the look for command. So let's say I want to know whether or not the number 103 is prime. So I don't know, maybe I've never seen any prime functions. Maybe I just, I have an idea for what it might be called. I might type something like prime 103. And here we see, okay, another error message is saying unrecognized function or variable prime. So what this is saying is that prime is not something that we've defined and it's not something already defined in MATLAB. So here it's giving us a suggestion because prime is very close to primes. MATLAB's saying, oh, did you mean this primes function? So let's see what happens if we type prime.
primes of 103. So we can see, okay, it's giving us a list of prime numbers up to 103, that's fine, but that's not quite what we wanted, right? I mean, yes, we can see that 103 is in this list, but maybe we just wanted a yes or no answer. I look for, and then the word prime. Hit the enter key. And now we see a number of functions comes up. So the first one here, we have factor. So this gives prime factors. We have is prime. That's going to return true for prime numbers. And primes generates a list of prime numbers. So we can see here, primes, the one that we called above, this looks like this last one on the list. If we wanted to, we could uh, say something like help primes. And we can see here, yep, it generates a list of prime numbers. And it's saying here that it returns a row vector of the prime numbers less than or equal to n. So remember, we tried primes of 103. And that gave us a list of the primes starting at 2, going all the way up to 103. All right. So remember, our original goal was we just wanted to check whether or not 103 was prime. And it looks like this is prime function is going to be for us. So it's going to return true for prime numbers. So let's try it. We're going to say is prime 103. Whoops. And we can see here we have this word logical and 1. So we'll learn a little bit more about this data type later. These are called Boolean values. So it's going to be either 0 or 1. And 1 in MATLAB stands for true and 0 stands for false. So here the 1 is telling us, yes, 103 is prime. If we try it with something like, let's give it not a prime number, so maybe 10, it should give us zero for false. And we can see here that matches exactly what we expect. I think this is a good place to end the video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.